We all use smartphones on a daily basis, and it's no secret that they have become a major part of our lives. Even so, not many of us know how our phones even function. For example, what does that little 4G or 5G at the top of the screen mean, and what does it do? Well, I'm here to talk about that today, and what a 5G and even 6G network could look like and mean for us in the future. With each new day, the world is getting just a little bit less social. Humans are losing connection with each other. Even now, you're watching me talk about 5G and what it can do for our world. But there's no genuine human connection between me and the person on the other side of the screen. So rather than go against technology and to blame it for the falling rates of sociability amongst today's youth, let us utilize it and figure out a way to use it to increase sociability and to foster connections with each other. So how will that be done via 5G networks? That's a question that needs a bit of historical background before it can be answered. First of all, what is a G? Well, G stands for the Generation of Cellular Technology. Most of us are currently using the fourth or fifth generation of cellular technology. And to be honest, they're astronomical step-ups from previous generations. Mobile phones began as large boxes which needed to be carried around. Those phones utilized the very first generation of cellular technology, also known as the Zero-G network. The Zero-G network was capable of only making very low-quality calls and nothing else. 1G networks came with phones being able to be reduced to the small size of an industrial-grade brick. Similar to the Zero-G network, it was also only able to make and receive phone calls. The 2G networks brought the very first text messaging capabilities to mobile phones. It allowed for data transfer speeds of 64 kilobits per second, meaning you could surf the web at the pace of a snail by today's standards. Later came 3G networks, which increased the speed to 600 kilobits per second making it 10 times faster than its predecessor. 4G is when speeds really ramped up. This new network allowed for people to achieve speeds of 12 megabits per second with clearer video and voice calls and much longer text messages and emails. So if 4G is so good, then why do we need 5G? Well, as society becomes more advanced and more technological breakthroughs are achieved, We need a stable base in order to take advantage of these advancements. It wasn't long ago that the first self-driving cars were announced. Driving cars needed a secure and reliable connection to the internet if they are to transport people safely. Along with security and reliability that a strong network can provide us, it can also provide us with ease of mind. Imagine this. If every car was connected to the same powerful network, All of the cars would be able to communicate with each other, essentially ending the possibility of sitting in traffic, car accidents, and missed appointments. Self-driving cars are just one example of the possibility that an extremely powerful network can give us. Throughout this pandemic, we have all experienced how much of a role interaction with each other had played in our lives prior to the existence of the COVID-19 virus. The internet has shown us how connected we could still be with each other, despite the inability to physically not be with each other. This connectedness would become strengthened with the correct technology. For example, Pokemon Go is a game that took the world by storm. Its trailer featured various people going around and catching models of Pokemon in the real world. Now obviously this wasn't how the game actually looked. But what if I told you it could look like that, eventually? So as 5G evolves into 6G and 7G and so on, the connections we will all have with each other will become strengthened. As your device gets faster and more capable, so will the virtual world we all experience every day. People will be able to go around catching Pokemon, surviving in the cold Canadian wilderness, and fighting alien spacecraft. However, As our networks evolve and become more advanced, there is a problem that continues to arise. Wavelengths. One main difference between 4G and 5G networks is the difference in wavelength that the 4G and 5G towers are giving out. As generations of networks have progressed, the wavelength of the signals of each successive tower that gives out 
become smaller. For example, 4G towers give out 250 mm RF waves as opposed to 10 mm RF waves on 5G towers. The thicker the wavelength, the easier it is to pass through objects. This means that a single 4G tower would be able to reach you through the trunk of a tree, whereas a 5G tower's signal would not. So how do we solve this problem? Unfortunately, by building towers on every street, in every park. And they don't necessarily need to be as big as the ones we're used to seeing due to the fact that they are purely there to service the immediate area around it. As mobile phone networks advance, the waves that they admit are bound to get smaller. It's possible that eventually we could see many transmitters placed in every home, appliance, car, and even cell phone for instantaneous results from a Google search or with the right technology, gaming that lets you feel as if you're actually in the game. This, however, can only be achieved if we continue to foster innovation and continue to work on developing our technology. So, while faster internet speeds and stronger internet connections can help us achieve the next level in entertainment, it can also foster the next generation of education technology and instruction. Recently, major advancements have been made in the virtual reality technologies. According to the Department of Psychology at the University of California, multi-sensory learning via auditory and visual means greatly helps the brain in the retention of information. So, while learning in the classroom setting provides students with information that they memorize, test on, and then are bound to forget, Virtual reality can allow students to actually engage in the material they're learning. It'll provide us with the ability to bring historical battles and situations right into the classroom. This can especially help in subjects such as history and science. Imagine being able to have each student play a role in the Philadelphia Convention during the writing of the Constitution of the United States of America or even shrinking yourself down to a microscopic level in order to simulate protein production in cells in cooperation with classmates. This new education technology will create new demand for virtual software and locations, further fostering innovation. So as technology continually progresses and betters every day, let us find ways to utilize it to create stronger connections with each other, using connections to innovate and to continue learning from previous mistakes and breakthroughs. Rather than fearing the future, let us be excited for what it holds for us. Embracing technology will allow us to pursue greater connections with each other and ultimately a better world for all. Thank you.